Among other features, Unity 5 has an improved cloth system, which is much nicer than uh, the two systems that are present in Unity 4. I've played around with it and it's quite nice and easy to set up. Of course, I can't really talk about it much beyond the, what I've already said. I can, however, explain how I've got almost uh, exactly the same results as Unity 5's cloth, but with Unity 4. But before I get to that, let me explain the limitations of Unity 4's cloth. So the systems that I looked on before was based on a physics cloth, so it was called interactive cloth, and I had numerous issues with it that I've explained in a previous video. Well, skin cloth doesn't have those issues. It's actually um, nicer in a way. It's done on a render and um, e update rather than a uh, fixed update, essentially. So it doesn't have the jittery movement issues and uh, it doesn't exhibit from the issues where I have to teleport from point A to point B. It will always stretch from that point to the next. Here I can actually disable it by getting rid of the external acceleration and random acceleration. So that's nice. Unfortunately, it behaves quite different from interactive cloth, where with interactive cloth, I was essentially able to attach cloth at specific vertices by using colliders. With the skin cloth, that's not the case. You can't do much with it. I mean, you can specify how far each vertex will extend, right here, but you cannot uh, make vertices extend in the direction that is opposite of where the normal is pointing. So in this case, the normal is pointing out to the left, which means that the cloth will also extend toward the left, and it will never extend toward the right. Let me show you what I mean. So if I hit play now, you'll notice that the cloth doesn't seem to bend in this direction anymore. In fact, it doesn't seem to bend much at all. That is because of how it works. Now, if the wind is facing in this direction, there's a little bit of flutter going on if you look closely. So, it is stretching in that direction a little bit, but not much. Fortunately, as it turned out, there's a way to hack it. As I've discovered, you can actually use skeletal animation, bones, to move the vertices back toward the right, which will let them extend toward the left. Now, I've done this by just simply having bones here. So here's a mask bone, and I'm going to move it toward the right. You will see that it is controlling the rear sail. So I can turn it, and the sail will turn. However, if I was to add another bone underneath it and then deform this sail toward the right, then it will be able to sway properly. Of course, I could do that in uh, 3D Studio Max or some other uh, authoring application and modify each vertex by hand and specify a vertex voice and all that, but honestly, I'm a programmer. Why would I do something like that? The sail itself is already in a bent position. Like this is as far as I want it to extend toward the left. So making it extend toward the right is a simple matter of just basically reflecting the vertices, isn't it? I can already calculate the weight of each vertex by uh, calculating its distance from the origin point to uh, how far it extends on the left. So I essentially did exactly that using a script. What this script will do is, essentially, it will create a bone right underneath an existing bone, set the vertices uh, to be affected by that bone, and then it'll move the bone toward the right, giving me the effect of swaying cloth. So here we go. The script enabled, you can see that uh, vertices were able to bend toward the right. And of course, if I face in the opposite direction, the wind will cause it to bend the opposite way. And now a cloth seems to behave quite well. Well, let's have a look at the actual structure. So here's the bone I was looking at earlier. 
This bone controls the rotation of the mast. The bone underneath it is new, however. It was created by the script. Here I just created a new bone and it moved the vertices. So here, if I move the vertices back, you'll notice that it will stop moving because this is where it originally started, essentially. If I move them toward the right, however, there will be a lot of slack left over and the cloth will be able to animate properly. It's a pretty simple solution, but it works quite well and it allows me to mimic Unity's Phi's functionality without having to uh, go up to Unity 5. Of course, I will end up upgrading uh, once Unity 5 is out. The system there is just that much better. But for the time being, I'm actually quite happy with how this turned out, because I got a pretty nice looking effect and I didn't have to wait a couple of months. Well, hopefully uh, this helps you in your projects as well. If you have any questions, just ask. Thanks for watching.